Okay. So, um, we have the agency here to help us understand your recommendations for the Budget Adjustment Act. And I have three of you here. Uh, I'm going to just give it to you to decide who goes first. Looks right. like Bill is the chief. Thank you. Tag, you're it. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you. So I'm looking at this device and I'm operating on the assumption that if I click on the uh, hyperlink underneath my name, that'll bring up the BAA. That's what we're hoping. Thank you, Avery. Go to page three. Page three. I was looking for a spreadsheet. Yeah, what's the other hyperlink? It's not a spreadsheet. Is it? Uh, the other one is the a uh, memorandum. Yes. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll post the that. BAA. I'll, I'll post that right now. Okay. <clears throat> with all we won't be able to get up there anyway. Which one is actually? We won't. I don't know if we'll be able to even make out the numbers. Go back and explore sure. The reversions, however, at least on the memo that I have, were on page three uh, of the draft. Would Would we like to do that out of order? And so I would invite Brad to talk about that, and then I would do the BAA. Would that work for me? If, if we're looking at the same document, sure. I don't know. Let's go through and see. Yeah. I'm actually going to have you run this because you're going to be needing to record. Okay. Okay. Page three. Is it on three? Oh, there. Those, those are the ones that yeah. were highlighted for us. I just posted a worksheet, and I, I'm not sure if that's what you were looking for. If you go, if you want your spreadsheet, if you go back to the hyperlinks under your name, you may need to just refresh the, the page. I'm sorry, technology. How do I use this device? <laughs> <laughs> Usually, usually we ask if the person wants to drive or not. It's our meeting to give you the option. No, please. Apologize for the delays. So we can go out of order and then just have Brad do the talk about the reversions here in the memo. And then it'll come up. Right? It'll yeah. be a yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's do that. Is that okay with you, Brad? Fine with me. Educational grants, that 5.7 million number right in there. Okay, that a lot of that came from the last year, last year the claw back for healthcare. Uh, if you recall, that was a two-year process. The first year, we took back, according to the legislation, we took back 65 percent. And the second year, we took back um, 35 percent. And the, the total was right around 13 million dollars. I think just under that we came back. So a lot of that, a lot of that consists of that that claw back. Um, let's 
see. Anything else critical in that one? Go ahead. Can you just remind us, just remind us on the clawback? I remember that was quite a, a moment of excitement. Yes, it was. Um, <laughs> you just kind of remind us. Sure. What what that was about, and I don't remember the na the number of the bill off the top of my head, which bill it was in, but that was designed towards the end of the legislative year um, to work towards saying that this is what we think teachers and other st other school staff employees health care sh benefits should be and we think you should be getting there this was for fy 19. this was for F this happened in fy 18 and fy 19. Yeah. Um, so to pass in 17 i guess then. Yeah. Um, and the idea was that if people did what was presumed to be the right thing then they would save this money it happened after the fact, after budgets were passed. It happened at the end of the session, budgets were passed in town meeting and such. So that first year when we took back roughly eight and a half million dollars, um, it was out of people's budgets. They had not, because they had not planned for it. So we took that money out of the budget yeah. that they had passed. So what So what happened What happened was... We, you, we, somebody. I, I did it. <laughs> 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 but at your direction. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll see if I can get out of this somehow. <laughs> um, so... What, what happened was, um, when I was calculating in FY18 how much money school districts were to receive based on their budgets and their revenues and such, what I did then was I knew how much each district was supposed to be quote unquote saving, and so I pulled that money back from each one. And it's about eight and a half million that first year. The second year, business managers aren't stupid, <laughs> as you all know. Um, business managers are, are not dumb. Um, so I'm sure they built that that additional four and a half million, that 35 percent, into the, a lot of it into their budgets. Some of them were, did save it. Some of them truly did, you know, get their 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 health care's were at, their health care plans were at that point. Um, so I think I think what we saw that year was a bit of an inflated education spending number because of that. But we've still pulled back over well four and a half million that second year. So that's roughly that's that's a large part of what's in there. Um, so. The rest of it um, we used, there was a carry forward for obligations and such, but that's the amount of money that, that is going back. Okay, we, we, yeah, we, I, think, I think that year we also overestimated a little bit what we're going to, we appropriate a little bit too much based on estimations. Um, because again, as, as you know, the, the amount that ends up getting appropriate for education spending in the appropriations bill is based on estimates of people's budgets, especially right now, um, and in about two or three weeks, we'll start getting information in from board approved budgets, uh, and we will start being able, and I'll be working with Ways and Means at that point, and we will be getting a better idea of what the demand on the education fund is going to be, and then that will start bringing things together. That's when they'll start looking at changing the property yields and income yields and the non-residential homestead, or non-homestead. <coughs> okay. So I kind of went over that quickly. Does that make sense to people? Yeah. Brad, about two million Two million of that, or the actual the the, the, yeah, this oh, is, sorry, Kathy Flanagan. Thank you, Kathy. She keeps me honest. Um, well, I'm sorry, Kathy. What are you saying? The, about two million of oh, the right. five is Act 46. That's that's right. We didn't. We the act. There was money for Act 46. I knew there was something I was missing. Thank you. And I was looking at the wrong page. Um, the Act 46 had incentive had grants to pay to help with merger costs and such. We, we, we overestimated at that point, so about $2 million I was coming back. And we kept about $300,000, I believe, to, for going forward to kind of finish up any little pieces out of that. But that's what a big chunk of that was, too. Can, can I just repeat what you said and make sure I got it right? Saying so about $2 million of that is that you had overestimated the amount of incentives that would be granted to unifying districts, yeah. and this represents correcting that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so that so that changes a little bit about what I said that 5.6. The difference would be 3.6 million if you take out that too. Yeah. And I'm saying we, we we pulled back 4.5 million. So we, we must have over, we must have mis you know aligned what we were estimating maybe on the wrong side. So. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't know. Do you want to go in any particular order? I decided to do the biggest one first. So. Yeah. That was, that was good. Okay. So special education formula. Um, we had a fairly sizable balance on the end of that one, but that's because we have a tail with our reimbursement system. Um, the last 
information that we pay on that comes to us in mid-September after the fiscal year has closed. And so we had a tail of, we had roughly $14 million left over. We kept most of that to pay off the tail and we reverted that $87,000. I'm sorry, what do you mean by the tail? The tail, the tail when, when, um, <coughs> yeah, it's, it's a funny one, I'm not sure, I, I understand conceptually, but in terms of discussing, I may not do very well here. Um, so Kathy, you feel free to jump in if you want to, but let me try first. <laughs> just, just let me try. Um, so what, when we appropriate money, we're appropriate for a fiscal year. And so we're paying all that money out in the fiscal year. So what we're really appropriating is the way the way we get information is we get information for if you think about it in quarters quarters two three and four or, or one two and three and then quarter four we find out about after the fiscal year is over and so we that that money needs to be appropriated and brought forward so we carried the money forward that we had from the prior year because we kind of we kind of do it that way and the idea as we move forward towards the, census, towards the special education census block grant is there's still going to be that tail the last year when we go from the reimbursement model in FY22, fiscal year 22, to this census block <coughs> uh, grant model. There's still going to be that tail. So we want to keep that money moving forward <coughs> so that we can pay off that tail without having to appropriate more money. So if we carry it forward, we don't have to appropriate. The reason we don't want to appropriate more money is because then that gets into the federal requirements of, of uh, maintenance of effort. Yeah. So whatever you appropriate is where you have to keep going. So we keep that number lower. That's a better place for us. So that's what we're going to try to do. Kayla? No, that's it. I was just going to, I remember hearing testimony to that effect, I believe, from Emily uh, and Mark last year. I just was... I mentioned that, but thank you. Could have said the same thing. Yeah, and, and better than I would have. So thank you. Um, it was a vague memory. <coughs> okay. Um, state place students, again, um, th the numbers are estimates. Um, we just we ended up just not spending that money, so giving it back out of the goodness of our hearts. Um, back to the Ed Fund. Transportation, we were close. I'm not sure why it was four hundred eighty-nine dollars and fourteen cents off, but we were close. <laughs> That's very close. And, and this, yeah, I, something something happened. I remember there was something. I said, what? but it was it was all okay. Um, for that fourteen cents. <laughs> I hate pennies when it comes to this stuff. So the five point six million, yeah, is that an unexpectedly large number? Was it kind of like normal? I think that's a little bit larger than normal. Um, do you know? Because of the because of the well, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I think, well, I, think, I mean, it's, you said it was made up of two. It, it varies, but, but yeah. it's made up of two unique mm -hmm. things that will occur in the future: the clawback mm -hmm. and the Act Forty Six. Right. Right. Um, it, but but I mean, you, usually it's it's not uncommon to have a, it be a million or two million dollars off. Um, you know, usually we try to be on the high side a little bit so that we can give the money back as opposed to being low and having to come in and ask you for more money at this point. Mm -hmm. So we, we do try to overestimate, not, not terribly, but by a little bit. And so the, the clawback portion of that, that's going back as essentially the clawback was too large before? Too much was, because this is my no, going back no, into no, 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 right? this, this no, this was... The idea behind the clawback was that school districts were going to save that, again, I'm right, just yeah. here, we're going to save that $13 million by doing their health care differently. Right. Okay. Uh, whether that will happen or not, I don't know. I can tell you really didn't. And the clawback was spread over two years. And it was spread over two years. Okay. But if you, if you take it all as one year, what was supposed to happen was they were supposed to be able to, by have, being allowed to re, renegotiate, they were supposed to be able to save $13 million. Right. And therefore, they wouldn't need that $13 million that the state was just taking. Right. And so the state took it and put it in it's, the it's end fund? It's in the end fund, yeah. yeah. It's, it it's stayed in the end fund. I, I see. Well, it was appropriated, and we didn't pay it out. Right. 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 So we're just returning it. Right. right. I see. And there, I was, see. there, was, there, was, some, there was some issue in that the language wasn't right, and they, so there's, but I don't remember what that was. Mark Peral can tell you about yeah. that piece. Um, but there was something about the language, and they had to, we had to write new language to make sure that it came in the right way, and that was all beyond my scope of understanding. Okay. 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 All right. Um, small schools grant is kind of the same thing. We, uh, we it's an estimate because we're not 100% sure of enrollments nor the final number that we're using for it. 
Um, so we, we overestimate a little bit, so we're just sending that back, that 20,000, 20, not 20 million. Triple E, essential rated education. I, this one surprised me a little bit. I don't know why there's money left on the bottom line, because it's formula driven. Um, and I would have to go in and look and see, and I don't know. I, and I was talking to house or to a house appropriations about that, and I just I just don't know what that is. So I, I can try to. I'm, I'm curious because I don't know why. So triple E is distinct from pre K. Triple E is, is yeah, special yes. ed. Yes, it's, it's special ed for pre K. It's basically if you think of it that way. I'm, when I say pre K, well that's how I'm talking. I used to say triple E and pre K to differentiate the two. To, to students. Right. In pre K, mm -hmm. when I say that, I'm talking about general education students. Mm -hmm. and so I should really be saying that instead of pre K, because pre K is all of them. Right. So I will try to make sure that I say it differently. Right. It's going to be 20 years of changing what I've been doing, but I will try. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's like some of the school district names, I don't know who they are anymore. <laughs> so, <Yeah. who? laughs> so, um, so anyway, I'm not, I'm not sure why there's money there. Um, I, don't, I don't know. It's not a huge chunk of money, but I, you know, if somebody was short, they would certainly have been clamoring for it. So <coughs> parents paid everybody out. Um, technical education. It's not here, right here. Um, technical education is is a lot of salary assistance and transportation, things like that, and we're estimating is, is what we're doing, and we usually try to do a kind of a flat percentage estimate across the salary assistance, and, and we were a little bit high because you never know how many people are going to be asked for a certain type of assistance, whether they have that person or not. So we were high, and so that that money's coming back. Um, flexible pathways is kind of a combination of. Uh, where, well, let me read it to you, how, we, how it was put, instead of me trying to, um, the, the, this money is partly due to the continued enforcement and monitoring of performance measures to ensure that reimbursement for program costs are only provided when students demonstrate the capacity to engage in secondary level learning. So in other words, what our folks have been doing is they've been tightening this is, I would say screw them, that's not the right word. They've been tightening their parameters up or their requirements of what these people are doing in order to get the money. If you're not really doing what you're supposed to be doing, you're not getting the money, is, is what's happening. And so so it's, it's getting some people's attention, and so so, the, so so we've been pushing that cost down a little bit. Wait, um, so who, who's not getting the money? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. The, the, um, generally speaking, this is the adult education yeah, yeah. There's there's a small school piece where they get it for some various things, but that's it's very small. Most of it's going to the adult ed providers. But adult ed is in a whole different funding track. It's over. I think that's over in the general fund yes. now. I yeah. think that got moved a year or two ago. Yeah, that's a, that's so that's yeah. not in the ed fund. Everything else is in the ed fund, right? Is that? Yeah, you were talking flexible pathways. Was I? And that, but you got it mixed up with the I do that well. for AEM. Okay. Well, well, let me let me let me back up here a second. You know, no, um, but this this was this was the year that they hadn't switched. This is the last year when they were in the end fund, I think. Uh, yeah. I think. Not switched I, a couple of years. I think I think I think the language is what happened a couple of years. I think it just started last year. No. I think. So I, th I think we're still in the end fund on this one. I'll check on that one for okay. you. And find out. Yeah, I like to sow confusion wherever I go. <laughs> so what fund does adult education come out in general? It is now. You know. It was moved. It was okay. moved. And I think I do think that just started last year was the first year. I that think. was when they did the whole thing. We moved the we right. Things that shifted transfer, around. general mm -hmm. funds. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. moved community high school out. Mm -hmm. We yeah. took all the sales tax. Sales, sales tax, yeah. sales news tax, and yeah, the increase the meals with the for your meals tax yeah, so, yeah. there was there's a whole bunch of shifting around I think that was part of it and I think I think this is just our second year of it now yeah. at this point. so I think that's what the confusion is here but I will I will check okay let's come back um does that cover everything I think it pretty much does yeah okay questions one one thing I did say I would come back to you with I find my phone I forgot to turn it on I don't like phones especially cell phones. Um, I told you I'd come back with better ADM numbers and equalized people numbers. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. We're not done, okay. and, I'll, and I'll come into that. But yeah. but, but the, the ADM number for this year currently is just about 86,300. Oh, I'm sorry, that's, yes, that's right, about 86,300, roughly, okay? Yeah. That, I, that I think that will go up, and I'll explain that in a second. 
Um, and then that leads to the equalized pupil calculation after the whole harmless of about 87,200 in rough numbers. So that's down about 400, two, 300, four from last, from last year. Um, the reason I'm, that things aren't done is because, again, some people are still realizing, oh, we screwed up in our uh, submission as, as we talked about last time I was here. But also, we found out that um, a lot of people forgot to put in their ELL students. <laughs> about 70 or 80 districts. Wow. So, wow. And, and this, and again, I, I mentioned this to you, I think, last time I was in, that a lot of this is we used to roll everything forward. We used to have that ability with the new system that we have we're reaching we're reaching into or they're reaching into our system from their student support system, so there's no rolling forward on our part so apparently a lot of people forgot to to roll forward their ELL students so we're going to recalculate sometime yeah. next week and hopefully get everything finalized at that point but we're we're, we're still in better shape than we were last year by far but uh, <laughs> last, last year at this point we had maybe 60,000 equal students <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I, I hate it coming in to talk to you guys <laughs> didn't they forget things like the third graders? Oh, they forgot everything last year. <laughs> they, they forgot all their tuition students. So some people forgot all their tuition students. It's kind of like, okay, you, you operate K-6 and you tuition 7-12, you're forgetting those students. Yep. <laughs> so anyway, so we're, we're doing better. So that's roughly where we are. So the, num the numbers should go up a little bit, I think. Um, can't guarantee it, but I think they'll go up a little bit from, from the numbers I just gave. So, of course, the obvious question is, if we, if we implemented the waiting study right today, how many <laughs> equalized pupils would we have? Same number. Same, no, same, same, same number. What? Same number. Same Equal, equalized pupils is, is right. a zero-sum game. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> equalized yeah. pupils is a zero-sum game. Um, it's, it's what you're doing to shift who has them inside. That's, that's what's happening. Uh, because, it, because the equalized pupil calculation is based on the two-year average ADM. Right. And that number is not changing. It's just the weighting factors. Even if you add new weighting factors, it's still still a zero sum game. You're not changing the total number of the state. You're just changing who has them. I, I've got that part. But if you have a student that was counted as 1.22 and now is counted as 3.14, that means somebody right. else is counted less. Well, who you, counted it, below mm -hmm. one? Well, it, 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 they're, they're not. They're not count pre K, but we don't care about them. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, all about the equalization it, ratio. It's, it's exactly it's it's that equal, right. it's that equalization ratio. It's it's getting in the weeds of my world. That's right. It's yeah, where you don't want to go. I just right. say, I now understand the equalization ratio. So I want to say it a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. Right. Um, some, some but 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 what that people. that that's that's gonna that's gonna that's gonna really the equalization ratio is the, that two year average divided by the weights, and so you're keeping the same numerator, okay. but you're really increasing that denominator. So the ratio itself is going from about 93, 94%, probably down to, I don't know, I'm guessing here, 86, 85%, 70%, I don't know. Um, but it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to really drop. And so people's numbers are going to shift all around depending on where the new weights are. And at some point, once we kind of figure it out and you want to start talking about we can we can play with that and see what yeah. would happen if you did certain things. I believe that's starting in the Senate. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. And is, is that why people are concerned about losing or gaining funding? Is that why? Because of the shifting around? Yeah. Well, the, well the, the, the yeah. Pool. I mean, one, <laughs> and again, that, that's one of the misconceptions that's rampant throughout yeah. the state. Rampant. With superintendents, yes. <laughs> sometimes, and, and and most other people, um, is we don't fund based on students. We we you know most people think oh we're going to have more equalized pupils therefore I'm going to get more money. No. We, we the the funding comes from your budget, whatever your voters have approved, your total budget. And then you have you have you this schools build, school boards build an expenditure budget and a revenue budget so they're equal to zero <coughs> hopefully <laughs> when when they come in they're equal to zero, and within that revenue budget are dedicated revenues such as federal money that has to be used for things and there are categorical grants like transportation special education small schools parents maybe you may have other sources of money like a surplus or, or you know fundraising or you might have um, tuition students coming in things that don't have to be raised by property taxes, those are what we call offsetting revenues. Mm -hmm. So when you subtract offsetting revenues from the total amount of money you need to get, that's your education spending. Mm -hmm. And that's what the state owes you. So there's, there's not a word in there about pupils. I think it would be really helpful for you to actually come back at I some point if that, that comes mm -hmm. And we like examples. Right? I would be happy. Yes. Mm -hmm. Not like little diagrams, yep. little kids. No, I, I think of numbers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do diagrams, I do numbers. <laughs> 
but I'll be happy to. Let me know when yeah. you want to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Did you have a question? No. no. Okay. Okay. That was mine. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. So I'm you proud. would say that there's nothing that comes as a surprise? In this, here? no. No, I, I don't think so. I mean, I, again, I, th I think that number is a little bit high, but there are yeah. reasons for that. So it goes back into the Ed Fund for a while. Mm -hmm. And so, so it's, what it's kind of doing is kind of coming to the bottom line of the end fund. Right. And so it will offset, there will be a, an additional revenue coming to carry forward. So then the question so, comes, you know, if we have money in the Ed Fund, are we going to be applying that to right. tax rates? That's right. So, are so to be? doing something else. Because yeah. so th this adds up to about 8.2, 8.3 million, I don't remember off the top of my head, but something like that. So again, that's roughly a penny on both tax rates, if you think of it that way. Again, we don't do home set the tax rate, but that's the average tax rate, it's about a penny. Mm -hmm. so, so, so 8 million is about a penny? A about 8.3 million is a penny on okay. both. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 8.3 Yeah, and so if you want that split, it's about 4 million on the homestead side and about 4.3 million on the non-homestead side. Okay. And that, that's FY20 numbers, it will change. FY20 being the current year. Current year. Thank you. You're welcome. You ready to write that? For sure. I'm just say, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. Want to try this again? Yes. Your documents are available. All right. I'm not driving. <laughs> I'll watch. Okay. All right. Can you read that? Yeah. <laughs> Can I? Is it up on the site? Yeah. Yeah. There you go. The B A S. I'm sorry. What? Can you see that? Oh, good. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we're at the top of page two. Is that right? Yeah. We're, we're at the top of page two. Hello? Yeah. Yeah. For the record, Bill Bates, AOE. Good afternoon, how is everyone? Good afternoon, CFO. I uh, have a relatively easy uh, conversation, I think, uh, that the 59,000 that you're looking at here on the first line is made up of two numbers. Uh, there is, uh, and, and both of these are related to the move. So uh, if you haven't heard, we moved from Barry City Place over in Barry to National Light. Uh, and a couple of moves. Uh, the first one was October-ish, and the uh, second one was November. So we're now all located in the uh, what I refer to as the uh, the old North Building of uh, the National Light Campus. A lot of fresh light. It is yes. If you haven't been over there, I'd encourage you to come up. Uh, really, really nice job they do with that uh, property. Um, there's two numbers that make up the 59,000. The first one is $26,000, and that is the fit-up costs. So when, when we uh, got ready to move into the new building, we noticed that uh, our, our legal team needed a more secure location. And so what we did is we worked with the uh, Buildings and Grounds and National Life to do some uh, retrofit. The total cost was about $128,000. And what we've agreed to do is amortize that 128,000 over five years. So, on an annual basis for the next five years, it'll be $26,000 for the fit-up cost. And then the second component of that 59,000 is 33,000, and that is cost associated with the move. So, when you uh, take an agency the size of uh, agency of Ed. There's lots of costs associated with a move. So, for example, we've got uh, 
an estimated uh, cost of uh, 5000 for secure shred. So we had a, uh, an opportunity to take some of the very old uh, paper documents and uh, secure shred those. Um, we had uh, new floor mats put down so that we wouldn't stain the carpet when we spill our uh, coffee. Um, and then uh, another example of a cost that's in that uh, line item is uh, copier move. So we had uh, multiple copiers and we had to pay the uh, moving company to move those over. So all in all, in all that's uh, 33000 And then the other, the other piece of the, uh, the 59 is the, uh, the fit up costs for a total of 59,000. Questions, more detail? Just to confirm, this is all general fund money, not education funds. <clears throat> yes. yes. And I, I, I turn yes. and look at that. See, I got two head notes. <laughs> Brad would cry. <laughs> all set? All right, thank you very much. Could you have done a cheaper piece? <laughs> 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 and and the, the transcripts yeah. made it to where they needed to go? The transcripts, yes. yes. Burlington, Burlington College. College. Oh, you, you heard him mention the oh, secure okay. shred, right? Back in the truck. <laughs> Kind of brought you in here for a small amount of money that's not from the Ed Fund, so but so thank you for your time. No, nope, not, not a problem. I enjoy spending time with uh, the folks and uh, happy to uh, come back over and have one on ones. Good to know you better. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Do you guys spill a lot of coffee? I didn't. Two hundred years ago. Great. Yes. Thank you. Utilizing them with the Thank you. Utilizing them with the kids. Thank you. Yeah. 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 So there could be some other people coming, it'll be in the next one. Mm -hmm. It is January. It's just kind of a reconciling. Yeah. It just looks like there were some missed opportunities for the kids. Yeah. Some kind of, yeah. Uh, All right, so we've got a we've got a little poll here. Um,